Hey everybody, welcome to the pit. I'm Dave Troop, and joining me as always is my co-host Tiberius Oddly. How you doing, bud? Fired up or something. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> overly hype, overly hype for Oddly. Uh, joining it's us gonna be a good week. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, joining us this week, we got we got two great guests. We got possibly the most requested person to come on the show in the history of the show. So we got Lethal. How's it going, dude? Did you know that that you were the most requested guest? Have I told you this before? You have. I mean, <laughs> I probably should have declined a few more times, you know, build, build up the hype. I made a bit of a mistake, but finally cracked. ETH. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we finally we finally got you on. And last but not least, we got uh, we got L-Town from Envy. How's it going, bud? How you doing? Good, man. How about you? I cannot complain. We got some pretty good Halo last week and some pretty crazy Halo coming up this week. Um, but let's, let's start with last week. Uh, we'll kind of go over what happened and sort of the one roster change, because this was supposed to be the roster change episode. I was really hoping that Lethal was going to come on here and drop all sorts of knowledge about these roster changes that are going to happen and all that. But I wish I was doing that too. It's what what what's happening, man? Like, I thought people would be switching up the rosters to try and beat you guys, but it looks like everybody's content playing for second. Or, I mean, I wouldn't say everyone's just playing for second. It's just <laughs> people are somehow for some reason being loyal. Like, I don't know what the hell they're doing. I didn't know that they did that nowadays. <laughs> but I don't know. I expected some changes, but I have not heard of like anything. I mean, I think like the I think the roster like ends tomorrow, but. As of now, I'm pretty sure everything's the same. Tonight at midnight Pacific. Yeah, tonight at midnight. Or, yeah, I mean, as far as I know, everything's the same. Yeah, everything's fine. No one's changing anything. The only thing is, Ryan Noob is on vacation for like a week starting tomorrow, and he can't play in the, this week's Pro League matches, so I don't know who they're going to... He can't tomorrow. play in this Pro League match? What? Yeah, he, um, <laughs> he is going to be in Costa Rica from tomorrow till next Wednesday. Wow. Um, one week. That's good news for to you, the 29th. Dude. Yeah. Automatic Let's go. Win. Liquid's first win. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> oh if you lose, God. it counts as two losses. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know, man. Oh, man, that's crazy. L-Town, were you expecting any changes? I mean, like, you guys have been, you yourselves, Envy's been doing really well, so maybe you guys uh, weren't. I mean, I was expecting myself to get dropped, you know? Uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> Cameras disappeared. Yeah. Uh, camera, oh. The video just went down. Did it? Is this? Got it. Not good. Yeah. I restart the call. Oh, good God. All right. We'll be oh, right that back. That sucks. <laughs> Got to fix your Skype, Dave, so I don't have to host these calls since it keeps I doing know, this shit. I know, I know, dude. I know. You're telling me. <laughs> what oh. was I saying? I forgot. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, you were saying uh, that you were expecting to get dropped, yeah. Oh yeah, I was expecting myself to get dropped, but <laughs> no, I was just kidding. Um, I mean, the only thing I would expect was I wanted a, you know, Hurricane Hook or Hook to happen. Uh, I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually forgot to bring that up. I was actually excited for that too, but nothing but happened. That didn't happen, so kind of disappointing. Are you guys maybe expecting to see Allegiance do a team change, or I guess because they're both duos, it kind of makes that hard. Uh, I I was definitely expecting that, but I mean, you know, Contra Dev and Goofy Ryan Noob. Uh, I know Devin and Contra are super attached, and Ryan Noob and Goofy seem to always be pretty attached, but they've been playing like some trash, even though they are better at tournaments, but I don't know. <laughs> we, w we went dark. What is wrong with Skype today? No, it's fine, is it not? Fine. It's, uh, it's it's not dark for you guys. No, it's fine. We're good. Mind. We're good. I'm just freaking yeah, out. Uh, over I don't know. I I expect them to make a change. So if they aren't, maybe they're just okay with getting found by optic. Yeah. Damn. Something. Um. Okay. Um. So, but we did have one change. There was one change in the HCS, which was Liquid, obviously, with the Noxide. Now, this was kind of rumored. We we hinted at it last week. We kind of knew, thought it might happen, but um, it wasn't yeah. set in stone yet. So, what does he bring to you guys, like? Talk, tell us a little bit about this. Uh, he wins his one-on-ones a little bit more. Uh, he's kind of younger than Assault. Doesn't always make as good decisions, but we've gotten a lot better at some of the game types we were really struggling at since we since we picked him up. So he's an improvement at least so far. Uh, there is, of course, concerns. People know he's been kind of a hothead with some of his past teams. He's been pretty level-headed with us so far. I, I think it's good for him to not 
perceive himself as the best player on his team. So, like, being on a team with, like, Spartan and Stellar is probably really good for him, like, mentality-wise. Um, yeah, um, what did you guys think about, uh, like, what do you, whole, you guys think about? The whole Liquid scenario is just weird. Just from the start, like, with the car crash and then Cleet was coaching, had to play, you know, I think, I think he was kind of in the mindset already that he wasn't going to compete, so then he randomly gets brought back in to compete, so that itself was weird, and then it wasn't working out, so I think it was kind of mutual. Unlucky. Yeah, unlucky, and then yeah. when they finally did make the change, I think it was kind of both sides understood. And Oxide, aside from bringing uh, oh, insanity to the team, it's pretty good. <laughs> Some shots. What, what do you mean by yeah, insanity? Dude. Besides his tilt, he he's pretty... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, he's fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right. he has his moments, but he's One pretty good. the craziest people I've ever talked to. Uh, coming from Lethal, that's a that's an endorsement of crazy. <laughs> Known as one of the loose cannons. Um, okay, but it does seem like that's hopefully an improvement for them. And this is a big week for Liquid because obviously they're the one team that's still winless at the moment in the HCS. Um, now I want... <laughs> as all these squeaks... And really, dude? Squeaky Karibo, man. It's fucking... It's, get, com get, it's, get it's his a... comfort. But, okay, so... I wanted to ask you, though, Lethal, about the uh, the reset last week, because that was interesting. You guys were kind of struggling that first game against E6. Cheating. Did you guys, did you guys pull the boat in there, or like, what, what, what happened there? Well, don't you see, the way E6 plays is just, they fucking, they fly at you, they're in your face, they get some kills, they run straight for your flag, so we're like, damn, this is a dangerous team. Mm -hmm. so we told Royal 2 to put his Xbox, you know, near him, so if we're losing, you just take the court out. So... <laughs> Unfortunately, we did have to use that tack. <laughs> no, I, I actually, I don't know what happened. I we were just playing, and Rosu never lagged out of Skype. He wasn't lagging in game. He like he was just spawn and was walking, and he's just like I just got kicked out. Game just fucking kicked him out. I don't know. And he kicked him out with 3:40 left. Mm -hmm. So we were messaging. Like, Snakebite was in the ESL chat. Hook was in the chat for them. Mm -hmm. They're like, all right, 3:40 left. Um, you guys are up by one. We don't cap. It's over in 340. If we do cap, they agreed to just play it out, so we don't have to like end it and fucking, you know, go through a bunch of hassle. They're like, if you cap before 340, just play out the full game full time. Okay. That's what happened. Because it ended up being a big reset for you guys, momentum wise. Yeah. Like CLG. Well, I mean, uh, sorry, E6 is playing really, really well, and then like Snakebite just went off after that yeah. reset. Like, First one, they were definitely playing really well, and we came out, and it was just. It gave us time to like talk about what was going wrong the first game, so we fixed that, and then the next two games we kind of just <laughs> stomped them. It might have been a momentum thing, or uh, definitely it was unfortunate for them on the first game. Yeah. Um, the other thing I want to talk to you about from from last week, uh, your games last week was that I think it was a regret slayer where Snakebite had 18 assists, but you guys as a team had 45. Yeah. That's fucking uh, ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, we 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 yeah, randomly. Uh, We'll have games like that where we, we've had games where we have over 50 assists. And I don't know. I don't know how it happens. Like we played, I don't know who we were scrimming, but we played a regret slayer. I had fucking two kills and I had like 20 assists one time. It's I don't know. Honestly, I don't know how that happens for anyone. I think you just got to either get really lucky to get a, that many assists or really unlucky. You keep stealing your kills. I don't know. <laughs> What, what, like, Eltad, have you ever seen that in a pro game? Like, is, does Envy ever put up 45 assists to the Slayer? Does that happen even in scrims? Yeah, it happens. I mean, one time Austin dropped, like, 18 in the Slayer. Holy shit. It's weird. Random. No matter what yeah. the map is, some days, or some games, like, someone will just have 18 assists, and they won't even notice they have that many assists, and you won't notice they did until the end of the game. You're like, what the hell were you doing? <laughs> That's crazy. That's, uh... Mm -hmm. I mean, those, like, you would see that occasionally in, like, old, like, the end of Halo 2 days. You would see, like, midship slayers or lockout slayers that have, like, 40, 45 assists. And, like, sometimes Beaver Creek. Not as much, but, like... Amplified. Yeah, Amplified is the other yeah. one. Yeah, Amplified is the Where other one. Where system kills. Yeah. I guess it's not too hard to get in this game, but uh, just with how easy it is to get away from stuff, it, it can make it hard to get that many sometimes. Yeah. Well, and it's a lot easier to win, like, one-on-one -on -one battles in this game than it is yeah. older Halos, where you really just wanted to help. help. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I think the uh, the because you only need it's only like a hundred damage per kill, right? Like if somebody was just standing there, it, it's like a hundred damage to kill them. One fifteen. One fifteen. Yeah. I so think it's I like tip because I did not know that. Seventy that shields, forty five health. <laughs> <laughs> that was the exact fucking number. I did not know that. There's the uh, there's the math, but <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean, it, it definitely shows you how much like players are staying alive because it's definitely not like it definitely doesn't add up like that in pro games. The damage towards uh, damage to kill ratio. Um, well, we have L Town here. So the other thing that was really interesting from last week, I think, was NVE six. That was supposed to be one of like the biggest series. A lot of people were really hyped to watch it. Uh, I mean, EG. Yeah, sorry, NVEG. They look the same. E's. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. So many E, E, G, E, six. It's all the the G and the six looks too somewhere. My handwriting, yeah. especially. Uh, but that was a really good like that. That was really it was a, the games were pretty good, but and the series ended up being like a three zero, like pretty dominant oh, yeah. fashion. So can you talk to us a little bit about that? Like, you guys were you expecting that to be like a three zero? Were, were you prepared for more of a five game series? Like, how how did you feel going I, into I, that? Right before we played, we looked at the game types. We we're like, all right, well, we have a really good chance to three zero them, mm -hmm. but. I figured it'd be like game four, or game five, but game one they outslayed us, but we won pretty not easy, but it wasn't that close. It was three one, mm -hmm. but then game two and game three it was just one play, one was a game. On game two, it was like forty seven forty four. EG was winning, and then Mick Gwen ends up sneaking behind him and hiding, and lets two of them run by him, gets a double. We end up winning the game because of that play, and then game three we won one hundred ninety five. But yeah, like only one play, like won us both games. Yeah, it was, uh, they were they were pretty good games. Um, how do you think they're gonna do like moving forward? Do you like because there's a lot of people who are like really doubtful. Like you know what I mean? There's a lot of like, uh, EG's no longer the top two, so now they're, they're not good anymore. Like there's a lot of that talk going around. Are you kind of in that camp, or do you think that they'll be back in the top two, top three contestion like very soon? Like wh where do you see it? Well, they already have three losses. They still have to play CLG one more time. That to play Renegades twice, that to play my team once, and then E6 once. So, uh, my honest opinion. Renegades twice? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. their last match, because you know it's 14. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, play them, they play them Thursday. They, they, play them, they yeah. still got to play Liquid again, too. And uh, like the, the scrims <laughs> against Liquid have always been close. Uh, so, well. they, yeah, they have a pretty hard time coming up. Mm -hmm. But, I don't know. I, I see E6 making it over them. I'd say CLG, E6, us, Renegades. Okay. Interesting, interesting. Definitely be a pretty tough. Uh, yeah, come down to the wire. Um, yeah. I just, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to say, like, they can't be, like, that top team again like they were. I mean, they're definitely struggling right now, but it seems it's just a lot of inconsistency throughout them and other teams. It's like every month or so, there's another team that starts stepping it up and playing a lot better, and they're, like, everyone's, like, they're the number two team. Like, them, play, play CLG, play CLG. And this month it's envy, so okay. this is you guys. So, you know, just don't be like the other teams and just randomly just stop playing or I don't know. It's pure inconsistency. But envy's been looking really good, so I'd say they're number two. And everything else is just kind of like a fucking crapshoot. Everyone <laughs> just gets on a praise they fucking play good that day. I, I'd say renegades are pretty clear number three, and then it like falls off after that. I mean, I guess they were. They. <laughs> they, well, they need to get better at flags, but other than that, I'd say they got the hot three uh, from CLG. I, I, I mean, we were going pretty hard against them, but I don't know. They, I guess they hadn't practiced. But yeah, they haven't played. They didn't get to practice at all last week, unfortunately. They did. Hey, according to them, they're better without practice. I don't know. I don't know what to think now. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think that's possible. I don't think. You're <laughs> I mean, that's what I thought. All right, <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Ah, oh, trust me, I'm better when I don't do this thing ever. It was that week without <laughs> H1Z1 that really cost him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, but let me let me think. Actually, there was there was a few good series. The Liquid E6 series and the Optic ALG series were pretty good. Those were three two series. Both went to game fives. Actually, something I've noticed is that the game fives have actually not been that good. Like we had the Renegades ALG game five uh, a few weeks ago. That fifty to like eighteen or nineteen. Yeah. Like destruction. And then Truth both Slayer. The, yeah, the Truth Slayer. And then both the Game 5s this week, again, like, the series were good, but then Game 5 was just a smackdown. Um, what do you think that is? Because Game 5 is Slayer? Uh, like, Game 5's I mean, always been Slayer, or Game 11, yeah, or whatever, but, it was always Slayer. It was, it was, I mean, was who, who's gone to Game 5? Let's see. It's been Renegade's Allegiance, which was a slaughter, and Allegiance is trash at Slayers. Uh, uh, most, Slayer, most Slayer, yeah, most Slayers, as they have shown. Allegiance Optic. 
mean, yeah. Allegiance at us Slayers again. Us versus Enigma Six, and we yeah. just we, we you guys randomly shit the bed. So yeah, that was yeah. just one of those games. Because you guys won the first Slayer in that series. You guys won game two pretty handily, actually. Yeah, it was, um, Eden, hey. it was Eden Slayer, and we actually communicated really well. Yeah, Liquid is an Enigma. They're an actual Enigma, not an Enigma. They're an Enigma. Like I don't get it. They will just randomly look so good throughout a game, and then blow it. Like they, it's like they die, and they just suck again. I don't know. Well, it's like they to, just to take the sports analogy. It's like they can't put together a full sixty minutes or a full game, yeah. right? It's almost like they're they sh they show you all this brilliance, and then they just go to sleep mm -hmm. for like three minutes and fuck off. They just tease you, <laughs> yeah. and then and then they fail, and you're like, well, like we lost again. All the players on the <laughs> team are good. It's yeah. just got to got to get their mentality and mindset just consistent. Um, okay, so I think like there's not really much else to talk about from last from last week, really, right? Uh, unless anybody, I'm I'm trying to think here, but I think all the most of the games were like they went pretty much how expected. Yeah. Everything that we haven't touched on, at least. Um, okay, so I guess uh, moving forward, this is a really interesting week because we have uh, one of the other matchups that hasn't happened yet. That is going to happen this week for the first time is CLG Envy, and this is like mm -hmm. as as uh, Lethal just pointed out. You know, somebody's always hyped to you know maybe these guys can do it. Maybe and now it's Envy's mm -hmm. turn. So <laughs> Helt out. How are you going to make sure that you guys actually do this and don't just get three would like everybody else who's gone up except hey, Optic, except <laughs> except Optic. Optic. <laughs> <laughs> Got to give the Optic. Uh, voice my credit. prediction for this week is we're going to beat CLG. You know, three two game five fifty forty nine. Go I'm calling it. Hopefully the vetoes go well, so it's a good game five. Yeah. First good game five. Mm. No, honestly, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Plaza. Plaza games are intense when they're really close at the end. We'll I'll make Plaza. sure to veto that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying Plaza. to help the viewers here. Dude. Come on. Plaza games that aren't close aren't fun to watch. True. When they are really close, you know, it ends with uh, everybody push, and then I leave VG. <laughs> oh no, dude! That was a nice fifty forty nine. Or it ends with like what eight straight missed sniper shots. Yeah, we're there. Uh, why are you even saying that? Is it because he can watch this? I mean, I guess he can watch the YouTube video, but he is not awake to hear that right now. <laughs> Little blow man, come on. <laughs> Meanwhile, your OS is crouched in a corner because nobody wants uh, to come help him. <laughs> yeah, the the enemy series should be really good. Uh, they should actually be undefeated, to be honest. Oh yeah, you guys. You guys, one because loss is you blowing it. Blew it. That should have been three zero, but whatever. Uh, should have been. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it. That would have been really hyped. Two teams both undefeated. For the, yeah, each for other the, in like the last like first cycle of the of the pro league. Yeah. But, yeah, I think that'll definitely be. One of the, one of the good matches. Of the week. Harvey, how do you see this going? Obviously, you're the uh, you're a liquid analyst here, so. I'd say at, at best for Envy, it'd be 3-1 in CLG's favor. I, I mean, I want to be, like, cheerleader for Envy. Come on, take down CLG. But i got to be realistic. I think CLG will do really well. Um, I don't expect us to see a I mean, Coliseum Now they want to beat us fly. even more. Now you're just screwing us over. Dude. <laughs> you're giving me a motivation. <laughs> uh, like, speaking realistically, I think it... It's either going to be a 3-1 or a 3-0. Are there game types, do you think, that if these are the game types played or something like that, that Envy could win? Like, is there a scenario you could picture, like, fathom in your mind where, no pun intended, uh, where... I was, I was about to say, why that? Fathom, 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 No, 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 no. Uh, is there a situation in, in, that you can kind of conjure in your mind where Envy does win? It's possible. They're, Envy has some good game types. Like they, they actually have some game types that they're really good at, and then some that they're kind of average at. So if they get their good game types, they could take down CLG or at least give themselves a fighting chance. But I think it's going to be either a three zero or a three one. I don't talk about the whole maps thing. I leave that to Snake White. Does all the, does all the research, all the vetoes. Do you guys have a coach or anything like that? I mean, you have Royal One, right? Is he still? Does he? Do no, they have uh, Clutch. Clutch. We have Clutch. Oh, He's. Christian Waits, I think. He. I mean, we have we have Wes. He's our coach. He he's actually like a really good coach at tournaments and stuff. And he he does it online. Mm -hmm. He's not like he know he does in game coaching really well. But out of game and stuff is just kind of. PJ does most of it, and I I'm normally in the call with him, but he's normally leading everything. 
So you guys don't have a dedicated analyst who's like looking up all the other team's stats, looking up your stats, doing all that sort of math. Uh, I, I always, uh, always, like, I always like CLG and like scrims and stuff because like all these other teams, their coaches with them during the scrim, and I'll like tune into one of CLG scrims right at the or right at the end. Like I'll check one of their streams, like TJ or Snakebite if he happens to stream, but he doesn't really stream scrims, so it's usually TJ. And then like right as the scrim ends, Wes will jump in and be like camo up in fifteen. Yeah, and that's the first the thing over. he said the entire night. <laughs> yeah, and then Frost and Rusty gets annoyed when he randomly comes in and says something. He's like, get out, get out. If you're not going to coach, get out. Elton, <laughs> <laughs> uh, how did you feel about uh, Oddly's little take on the, the series here? No comment, man. No? Yeah, don't mess with the G. Yeah, I can't, you can't just predict that's anything and just get 3-0'd, you know. That's been my mistake. I keep saying we're going to 3-0 people. <laughs> Have they not yelled at you yet? No. I, I also no longer wear liquid clothing on liquid days, like when we're competing. It's just bad karma for me. <laughs> How is that? What? Like yeah. it, any Anytime I wear liquid clothing, it, it gets worse. Really? I mean, just keep mixing stuff up till you get a win, and then whatever you're doing on that day, just keep doing that. Yeah, it's how all sports superstitions work. Yeah. I don't. I don't even know who we play for our other match. I think it's. You play E6. I think either E6. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. You play oh. E6. My goal this week is to just uh, get over 100 fantasy points both days. I'm trying to come out with. <laughs> that would be nice. Uh, I think actually, you, 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 I think both of you guys play E6, right? No, I, I play. EG again. Yeah, this, oh, okay. this week's weird, dude. So EG, EG has a rough week then, because they're playing oh, they, Renegades they play Renegades for the first time. Us. So this could be like a, a real challenge for EG. Well, um, the week after, then the week after that, I think they're going to play E6, someone else, if it goes backwards. Because they play I feel E6, like it, Allegiance. Yeah, because I, I think the schedule, like... It goes backwards, yeah. Now imagine you're in gym class, you know, you run to the line, touch the line, go back. That's what we're doing. We're touching the line this week, then we're running back. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh. Uh, they've got, yeah, they've got, they've got the tough schedule coming up. Um, so, like, do you guys think that Renegades is going to take them in the, in the, in the, in the first game? Because we haven't seen that matchup yet either, right? Like, how do you guys see that matchup playing out? I'll say 3-1 Renegades. The first match of the day... So, uh, let me do my math here. Uh, I don't know. It depends on what Renegade shows up. <laughs> I I don't know. I mean, like, they could come out like they did against us, and I feel like we were playing well against the, uh, against them, but they were they were really sloppy, and I feel like if they, that Renegade comes out, um, I, I think EG could definitely win, but I feel like if Renegade has been playing plays like they have been in scrims and in some of their other matches, they've been scrimming really well the last couple of days. Um, I feel like they might just kind of roll over them, to be honest. Strongholds week, I favor Renegades and E6 both against EG. The Strongholds week. Really? I think it's kind of shitty for EG that both times they've faced Enigma 6 have been Strongholds. Really? Yep. I think that's weird. I feel like they would have scheduled it so it would have been one week was Flag week, one week was Strongholds week. You'd think so. i got to <laughs> stop thinking, dude. Yeah, that's what we have with you guys. We have we play you this week is strongholds and next week is flag. That kind of sucks for them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it it really doesn't sound like there's much confidence in EG. I mean, do you have yeah. any do you have any insight, Lethal, as to like what might be going on here? Like, because you were with them Dude, for so long, know. right? Like, can you like open the EG the like on. case and tell us like what's happened or? That it's it's burning down. Someone's got to call the fire department. That place is it yeah. is on fire. I it's just it doesn't make sense. I don't get like <clears throat> they were good, and then they were like they were good right after I left, and a little bit after I left, and they started playing a little worse. But I mean, like they weren't bad. Like they were still good. And then even when they picked up Suspector, they were pretty good. Uh, they like they were they were doing pretty decent in scrims against like us and beating pretty much every other team around the time the game type switched. I mean, take that with a grain of salt because nobody really knew what the hell was going on. If you go rewatch, like, right when the game type switched, everyone was kind of running around. The heads cut off again. Uh, but, I don't know, like, they, it was, when those game types switched, they were looking well, and then, 
uh, I don't know, they took a break, and then they started sucking, and then they started playing again after that break and did decent, and then they took another break, and now that's where we are now, and they just look like they're lost. So is it just lack of practice then maybe? Like if they actually put in the grind for a few more weeks, they'll be fine? Well, that's what I thought because the second break they came back from was like a week ago, and they've been practicing, and it seems like the practice, the more they practice, actually hasn't even helped. They've been looking actually worse the past week with the practice. Really? Like I said, it's weird. That is weird. Yeah, it's... I don't know. Suspector definitely doesn't look to be in the same form he was at at Worlds, either. Allegiant Suspector? Yeah. Like, Suspector was... A whole different Suspector on Allegiant. Yeah. Granted, he got a lot more like power weapons and stuff when he played yeah. with Allegiance. Well, this play style is different on EG. Too. Yeah, I mean, when I joined EG, it was so weird. It was weird for me, too. I mean... It was a different game and stuff, but still joining just like that team is a completely different atmosphere yeah. as opposed to pretty much any other team I was on and like he was on and even yeah. commonly was on. It's just like I mean, our team like Allegiance, we're just so fast. We just hold forward. Yeah. EG's a little slower, so. Mm-hmm. Well, it's it's funny too because I'm I, I'm struggling to remember oddly who did we have on who said who was talking about that Allegiance team at that point. And said that actually, like he gave a lot of the credit to, to UL Town. Like I can't remember what oh, guess this oh, was, but oh. said that you were like setting up a lot of the shots and doing a like you did a lot of the stuff behind the scenes in the game that kind of allowed Spectre to go off in game. And I'm I'm wondering now. I can't remember who said this though. Do you remember I, this oddly? I don't know what player would have said that. I know we had Kratos who said Suspector was a top five player in the game. It might have been Kratos who said L Town was the best player. But I, I've said both L Town and Nated kind of enabled that team to go off because they were always flanking or pushing somewhere, just putting themselves in positions where they were drawing attention, and Suspector would just kind of take all the power weapons, kill everybody. So maybe I was thinking of you, and that was uh, your response to Kratos. I don't know. But um, maybe that's why Spectre is the same. Like, because that is a thing, right? Like, when you take it's like these these games, like they're not so not very many players are super plug and play where you can take them out of any roster, <clears> put them onto another roster, yeah. and they'll get the exact same stats. Yeah. Like, as much like, as the forums want to do that, it's not really how it works. Yeah, there's like chemistry and play. Like, yeah, you can't. You you would figure like you could just take like a fourth from one team that's not doing that well and to put like a player that's technically better than them and expect them yeah. to just be better. Like, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, like when Han- when commonly joined, and then when Suspector joins, even when Penguin joined RNG, you can see a lot a big shift in him. Mm-hmm. Uh, just I don't know that's how it works. And that and that actually can kind of work too, because like the one thing that I'm kind of always hesitant of in any video game, because you see this a lot in all these sports, like if, if you follow any other games, that the best team people will say those are the four or five best players in the game. Those are the best players in their roles. Those are the best. Do people really think this is the case? Like, do you guys really think this is the CL with uh, with like let's just say CLG right now? Because with they are CLG, it actually might be. Are the they case. actually f- the four best? Are they actually the four best players in the game, or is this just like again a combination of four good players, definitely talented, but kind of when you combine them all together, oh, now it's like now they look even better than they actually are individually. I mean, it is kind of inflated. I think if a team is having a lot of success, so it's kind of hard to actually pinpoint who the best is. Mm-hmm because everyone's in different atmospheres when they play and stuff. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, if everyone did, if everybody switched, everyone, there was, like, a fantasy draft for teams, and pe- people had to play those teams, I'm sure it kind of, sw- people's opinions would switch just because of teams' performances, but I don't know. That's just, it's just a weird topic. I think CLG is kind of a rare case where, like, if you look at those people's play styles, they might actually be the best at those play styles in the game. So it just kind of happens to work out in their case. But, like, if you look at other games and you're like, this team's the best in the game, uncontested, but their support player, whatever, like, say, League of Legends, like, SK Telecom's support player is not the best support player in the world. But, like, people see SKT's success and they're like, he must be the best support player in the world. Mm -hmm. He's on the best team. Yeah. Like, people have different opinions on what makes someone the best player as well. Yeah. Yeah. And you definitely see the stylistic differences between teams because you see, like, most of the teams are, like, it was, I was kind of looking on Halo 5 Arena today, cause kind of the, some of the team stats. You see, like, Envy's actually, um, they've got, like, one of the lowest, I think about the third damage per, per minute, like, as a, as a team, like, lowest. Um, okay. Which is, which is interesting. But what that tells me is that you guys play, like, slower game. You're not taking much damage, right? Because if you're winning these games with that little damage, you're obviously taking less. 
Um, you're not, you know, so it's kind of interesting to see, like, if you were to put a player on Envy now who's super aggressive and just kind of ran balls, balls deep and kind of just ran he forward, hit. he would just die. He, all, he would just die all the time, right? Because it, it seemed like it wouldn't really fit. Or am I am I at a place saying that, Elton? No, you're you're right with that. I mean, I don't I don't feel like we play slow. It's just we don't lose our shields and we really shouldn't getting into unnecessary battles and stuff. Yeah, unnecessary damage is definitely one of the unseen things to like public eye. People, like I said, people love if you get a no scope. People think you're better than someone who gets two cleanup kills in the same spawn. Like they they don't care. How you or they don't care what you do; they just care how you get it. Yeah. Uh, and so if you are unnecessarily losing your shields and getting one shot, and that causes you to die or causes them to be able to push, people don't they don't see that. It's just it's definitely one of the unseen, unnoticed uh, aspects. Or, like if or if you're like crouching around in a random place and someone above you just got dropped to no shields and you don't go chase mm -hmm. to finish that kill. And you let that guy get away. He gets his shields back, charges your teammate, and trades. Like you could have got that kill and not lost a teammate. Yeah. But that gets completely unnoticed while you're sitting there crouching, like because you stayed alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, those are the types of plays where pros will say like it's right to chat, like right to die. You know, I forget. Yeah. I think it was Ryan who said that. There's like there's correct times to die. You know, and like knowing that, knowing when right. to, to do stuff like that is that's what kind of takes you to a, an extra level, right? It makes you a pro player mm -hmm. instead of just a good player who can beat people online. Um, the bottom understandings is actually a really interesting time this week because there's a lot. There's like, uh, oh, pretty much like Liquid gets to play both Allegiance and Optic, and I believe I believe Optic, um, or sorry, Allegiance is also playing. Uh, no, no, yeah. So it's sorry, just Liquid playing both teams. But essentially, yeah. what that means is that because of like the the wins and everything, like Liquid could theoretically after this week. Be in if we fifth. win both series, we are in sixth place. Yeah, if you win three zero both series, right? No, nope, we can three two one and three one the other, and we are in sixth place. Cool. So because the optic doesn't win a different match or something. Yeah, assuming optic and allegiance both lose to uh, Enigma optic six and renegades six. respectively. Yeah, six. Yeah. Yeah. If they lose those series and we win both of ours, as long as both of them are not three two. We are guaranteed to be sixth place. Okay, so some positivity. Are you? Is it like obviously you guys have got to knock side on now? Like we talked about, fre like fre uh, fresh air for the roster, a little bit more aggression. Things are looking up. So far, yeah. So do you like? Is this? Are, are, is Liquid going to get a win here? I, I, gonna keep asking you for these predictions are we finally gonna move out of the basement? I, I'm gonna stop predicting Liquid stuff. I'll but predict for you. I got you. Liquid will win both their matches this week. I can see it. You think yeah. so? Yeah. Mm hmm Maybe will think so, too? Well, Allegiance has a sub, so I'm going to say they'll beat them. Yeah. Because I don't want to imagine a world where they lose to them. <laughs> then Optic. Uh, I, think, I think they'll beat them. If I have my Maniac Cycle down, it's his week to do really bad. <laughs> <laughs> the next yeah. week he'll do good. Yeah. So, and how's APG gonna do this week? Uh, he will do below average. He will, and in reply to his doing uh, average, he will then check his Twitter to see Optic fans saying he needs to step it up, and he will retweet and favorite them. Uh, <laughs> so that's my prediction. Is despite the fact that he destroyed us last time he faced us, he's sitting in fourth from the bottom or third from the bottom in KD for the league. So like. He will he, do average, and his response instead of practicing us. will be a favorite tweet. <laughs> I saw that. So I'm retweeting tweets. <laughs> um, apparently, Hines is on ALG, though. Appa that's what Chat's saying, at least. That the, that's the official sub for this week will be Hines. Since when do we believe Chad? I don't know. Not numbers. Chat. I don't believe Chad. 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 Not oh, Chad. I well, wish if it was Chad, I would 100 yeah, percent tell you this here, my, is true. My it still stands, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no trust for the allegiance. Uh, it's actually. It, this is kind of making me sad because I've seen Liquid and Allegiance do all this good stuff for Halo, like recruit analysts, get more people in the community, paying jobs, and try and grow the Halo scene. But they're not winning games. The players have got to step up on those teams now, win some games. Allegiance needs to scrim more. Contra, you're in the chat. Scrim more. Shut up. He's <laughs> most perfect. Don't talk to him like that. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, I mean, Optic is in an interesting situation because they they could like they they play so weird. It's like they'll play really really well. Like it's it's almost like Maniac is the X factor for that team. He either shows up and is like carries them, like goes top of the top of the scoreboard slaying, or just plays like shit. Yeah. And it's like I don't know how you can. This is actually a question I I, I can pose to Leaf on Town here. As a player on your team, would you rather a guy? who's like a consistent, you know, like average, mediocre player. Like, he, you know what he'll do. He's not going to do anything flashy, but he's not terrible. Or would you rather a guy who some games will just carry the whole game and some games will just play, like, awful? Would you rather have Chig or Naden? I would rather Holy have a player shit. who takes the – I would rather have a, a player who takes the game serious, so not Maniac. Not Maniac. Okay. <laughs> not, not him. I Choice like, C. I would like someone who plays a game and wants to, wants to do good. Doesn't just want to do good, you know, like, uh, I should do good so I don't get fucking verbally assaulted in my YouTube comments. I want someone who wants to be good. I'd go with the more consistent player. Yeah. More consistent. You can't rely on that going off once every other yeah. game. Then game seven, he just, you know, shits to bed. Mm hmm. You know? Yeah. It's... Some people do that. Yeah, some people do that. <laughs> It's, uh, well, I mean, it's been very interesting because that team has been, you know, under a lot of flack for not practicing, obviously. But then this last week, you know, they were in California tweeting all the pictures of them at this land. Like, you guys are, you know, we have three different te uh, representatives from different pro teams here. Like, how much are these guys, how much is Op Optic actually scrimming? Are they I was playing? surprised with how much they actually played while they were there. Like, they didn't, they didn't completely slack off. I mean, after the first four days. Yeah, I scrimmed them <laughs> when they were there. Yeah, after the first four days, they, uh, like, you know, after Anaheim ended and all that stuff, they obviously didn't play during Anaheim. But, you know, I was actually surprised that once they decided to stay, they actually went to a land center and actually took the time and effort out to practice. So that was actually pretty good. That was, that was a good sign. can't say I expected that. They did play a decent amount. But, uh, you know, I don't really think that makes up for the fact they missed four days while being in Anaheim and then missed another two days so far because Maniac lost his ID the night before his play. <laughs> So, oh, I mean, negatives outweigh the positives here. They do have the third most games played in the last seven days. That, that's an inflated stat because they just they just play multiple teams and just, like, they just fucking play. I, like, I, it's not yeah. quality. It's not Yeah, quality. they just play to play. Like, you, yeah. I don't know. There's, they play one series and then oh, they're tired and they just keep Thankfully, playing. Thankfully, Philly's getting offended looking for attention. Everyone give him attention. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> that, that's the thing, though, is I think that... Uh, you know, like, it's probably better as, like, I've never competed at the level you guys do, obviously, but just trying to do anything. It's, it, I feel like it'd be I better to put in a few hours every day, like, play one or two series really hard, full focus every day, than trying to play, like, five series in one day. Because by the mm. fourth series, you've got all, you're carrying all the baggage of the losses, you're tired, you've been sitting there staring at your screen all day, you don't necessarily want to play. You have the same energy and, like, attention. One scrim focus. using all your energy, like, talking a lot, going hard over this full series is pretty much max you can get out of a scrim like that you'll get the most out of that yeah so what do you think if you did those two a day like that's probably those, like two of those blocks a day one in the afternoon one in the evening you'd be good and we just we just do one like one whole 14 game series you know put all your effort into it and just kind of talk about it as a team <laughs> rather than just you know playing it and just you know posting for another scrim getting another team in there and starting the games back up Okay. Uh, L-Town, do you guys do the same thing? Just try and get one in a day, or do you guys go for Yeah, I think that? anything more than one scrim is just too tiring. Oh. If, if you try, full, like, your full attempt for 14 games, you should definitely be tired by the end of it. How long How long does that take? The 14, about, about roughly? Give me, like, a window. Oh, two, two hours? Two hours? Two, two to three, two depending on, like, if there's any issues, people are milking. Yeah. And... So do you, I, I mean, obviously I think part of the problem is too is that a lot of a lot of you guys, you don't have your full day to dedicate to this, right? Like there's still a lot of Halo guys who are doing other shit. So you can't, you know, do a scrim at 12 o'clock around noon or one in the afternoon and then do another one like maybe right around dinner time after you take a break and recharge and do a second one, right? Because you kind of have to, like you said, if you only have a, if it's going to take three hours to do one, that's, you need a, you need a break after that, right? Um, yeah. Now, what do you guys do? Then, if you if there's one game type that you really, really want to work on, and one map or something like that, like can you guys find another team necessarily to scrim you on that game type multiple times, or like 
do you guys just play it the once that day and then just trying to go over it mentally more and talk about it more? Like, how do you guys go about improving specific things then, uh, specific game types or maps? Well, if you have a weak game type, usually after a series, you could ask the team if you want to, like, replay a game mm -hmm. type or two. That's, like, the best way to do it. Yeah. Happens sometimes where you'll say, hey, uh, if, you, if they do want to play more, you just can replay that game type, maybe another one or something. But, um... I don't know. I mean, we don't really do that a lot. We just kind of... Like, if there's problems on it, we, we normally just talk about it more. Eat, like, once it's, like the streams are off and the scrims are over, you know, just try to... Is, most of the time, you can tell what you were doing wrong in that one game. If you can really just notice that, you just work on that and smooth over, like, each of your small problems at a time. You, know, you just make sure to fix that, and the next time you play it, make sure you're not doing that mistake and if you find another mistake you just work on that one and eventually you have it all no 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 what you have to do after as soon as the game's over you have to point the blame at somebody else and insist Escape that you did nothing wrong that's how you get better oh i, I thought you went through and watched the video and just constantly just pointed out one person's <laughs> mistakes just so that they felt really terrible just pick mm -hmm. one person on the team and just okay we're just gonna watch the video and every time he fucks up we're gonna stop it we're gonna replay it from four different situations so mm -hmm. why this is such a terrible play. You go third person and you watch <laughs> yeah. different angles. Yeah, you got to see, like, see, look, this is terrible from this angle, from this angle. There's not a single angle from which this is a good play. Mm -hmm. uh, and just make them really feel terrible. When a forge, add one of those filters. Play <laughs> filters yeah. Even with this filter, it looks bad. What are you doing? <laughs> um, but it seems and then like you pick up Den Oxide. It's yeah, going to take a exactly. while to, to get better at shit, though, right? But if you do it like that, because it's like, instead of spending a day focusing on, you know, the pit, or sorry, the rig, you're spending a day focusing on like everything and then it'll take you like a week or two to fix uh, something on the rig that could have been fixed in maybe a couple of days. Is there like, is there logic to that? Or do you guys think that it wouldn't be able to be fixed that quickly even if you directed focus? I mean, I feel like it just kind of depends on like what your magnitude of problems are on that game site. Something, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, if there's something clearly bad, like you were getting slaughtered on it consistently, you gotta go into that map and you gotta figure out something you else. You gotta go in theater and watch yeah. it multiple like, times. Yeah, like it de definitely depends on the magnitude of your problems on it, but like, let's just say... Um, you just can't close out games. Yeah, yeah like, or it's like on Plaza or something, like Plaza Slayer, they get control and we didn't break it, and because we were just like, someone would just like, we just kept solo pushing and like jumping up like top yellow or something instead of going loop first, like just something like that. You can definitely talk about that and just get in everyone's mind, like reassure the game plan because honestly, like a little bit of time, after a little bit of time, like even if you're having success on a game type, you're going to stop doing something eventually, just naturally. So you just got to reassure and mind everyone the game plan. Okay. Um... I'm trying to think. We've gone, we've gone over a lot of stuff here. I'm trying to think what else there is, if there's anything else to talk about. I haven't been all over the map. Um, don't know if there's any, any other series that are really worth a lot of in-depth investigation next week, other than what we've talked about. Um, and after this week, it's going to get pretty weird, especially if like EG has a bad week. and I don't know. Well, I think if EG has a bad week, they're in serious contention to not make a top four. To the, yeah, not go to the tournament. Yeah, it's. Uh, I actually it's think they won't think anyway. I, I I'm predicting Enigma Six to be the fourth place team at the end okay. of the season. Well, Hugh and Boo Boo have been unbelievable. I mean, those, those two guys. Are, predictions. Like Hugh especially has just been impressing the fuck out of me, and Boo Boo has been really impressive too. Actually, in a lot of his games, like those two guys mm -hmm. look. Look really good. Um, what are your predictions, Dave? For for what this this top week? Four. Oh, for top four, um, CLG, NV, Renegades, and uh, see, I'm really torn between EG and E6. I actually can't, I I really can't make up my mind. Well, I, I would go with E6. I would say those three and E6 because right now, the schedule and stuff coming up. I feel like EG is looking really weak, and the teams they play this week, I mean, and even next week if they are still looking bad, like they can't pull out, you know, at least two of them, at least two wins. That's not good for them because I think E6 has a higher upset potential 
I wouldn't, I guess, upset potential and just win percentage against like pretty much every other team right now that needs you to. Okay, so what's if you can ask me who has a, who's going to finish the season better, I would say E6 right now. Interesting. So let's, I think the matchup between EG and E6 is going to be probably mm -hmm. just the decider right there. Yeah, that's a, it's a huge game, right? I, I, thought, I don't think that's for another... Is that next next week or the week after? That's next week. Next week, right? I think. So that's going to be hype, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be a really, really big oh, game. Um, oh man, they are on a flag week, then. EG can't... Uh, I just think EG has to not get, what's it called, 2-0 this week. That, that's going to be really important. They, they can't that's drop a lot tougher. <laughs> They, it's gonna be. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's really easy to say. Much much more difficult yeah. to do when they're playing uh, two really good teams. So, um, okay, let's have let's have a little bit of fun here then at the end. Let's theorycraft this. What happens if EG doesn't make top four? Because as we uh, know, no. the way that it goes, you have to split into duos, right? Yeah, like uh, a, you can get rid of three people. Now, I thought they. I would have yeah. thought that EG was going to try and pick up Huke and drop Spectre. That's honestly what I thought was going to happen. I yeah, I yeah I've said that on stream a couple of times too. I said. I don't think they will, but if I were them, I would just be like, <laughs> I would just take a shot and be like, "Do you want to join this team?" The only thing is I, maybe I feel like Hook wouldn't would have taken it off. I don't think I don't think he was he would have yeah. joined either. So, so do you think maybe like Hook Hook would I I think like because he would want to he's been playing with Boo Boo right like he would want to go as a du as a duo would he not? I don't know. I, I mean I don't know how loyal they are. Yeah, I don't trust anyone in this I game. I just feel like I just feel like he wouldn't have left that team. That's it. So what is what does EG what does EG do at the end of the season if they if, if things really go how everyone in this call is kind of seeing them right now and saying they, you know they're not going to make the the top four and they're you know that if you know if you know those Roy Lunchbox snipe down those guys are not content with losing right uh, they're all very if they don't make teams. it uh, the trio breaks up it, it's a hundred percent they have to. Wow. I don't see any scenario where they don't. Really? So just because they, they be, I don't know. The way they'll be thinking, they'll be like, "Well, I mean, we tried with two different forts. Two different people, I, you know, and we just and especially like the magnitude of not qualifying for a land in general. It's not like going to a land and like not doing that well, you know. It's like you literally didn't go to it. Yeah. So I think 100% they would break up. I don't know what would happen after that. I would just be guessing at that point, but yeah. I mean, it, it it is the logical thing. Like you, you can't really. I don't know how they stay together if this happens, but it's just like, what does that what does that mean? Because that probably means Snipedown gets dropped, right? The brothers stay on the EG brand because there's two of them. I don't know because Snipedown's technically the captain. And, on the team and well, the manager. I, I know captain isn't really a thing. Like, the manager is like, the one that determines who keeps the seed. So, yeah. like it could be Kelby says, "Hey, Suspector's got a lot of talent. Let's keep Suspector and Snipe down and build around those two with two new players." That's true. That's true. Could be very interesting. Kelby is a good businessman. He he knows talent and whatnot. I when don't he sees it. captain. Yeah, I mean, and I know for anybody out there who's a captain. Captain is not a real thing. It just it, there's a C on your jersey if they if they just have that. You're but captain, you are not, you are not you captain. You are dropped. not the leader. Yeah. Don't lead people. Uh, <laughs> the only thing captain's ever done has been like if a team breaks up, that you person the has the seed over people. Like that's the decider. And snipe down was. I mean, I know Roy and Lunch have been there pretty much the same time as Eric, but Eric was actually the one. Like approached by EG in the first place, back like before MCC and stuff, he okay. was one brought on as like as the first person on EG, and then those are the people he got around. Him. Okay. They bring back Ola. Oh. <laughs> Ola for who? <laughs> Fuck, keep switching people. Fuck, keep I think L has something to say about that. I'm not gonna want to give up. No, he doesn't have a choice here, and either does Ola. He just bring him back. <laughs> He's there. What, what's it like playing with Ola, L Town? I mean, that guy's uh, you know fucking, the wizard. It's it's so much fun. <laughs> yeah, like, we'll be in the middle of a game, and I'm just like laughing because of the stuff he says sometimes. He's yeah. been playing really well too. He's yeah, a, and he, he's been he's playing out. really. Good. Yeah, it was, it was actually really funny because at the beginning of Halo 5, people were saying that he wasn't, you know, I think even Oddly said, like, we, you were watching a play, you just didn't look hey. comfortable in this game, right? And he just like, he wasn't. Yeah. 
but now he's he is. Really good now, though. And at, not qualifying for Worlds kind of gave him some time to play the game, learn how to play, and he got really good just in the off season alone. So do you think that maybe that like no stress environment to just play the game and kind of practice some of his movement? Because like one of the things that uh, you mentioned about him, I forget. I think it was one of your player reviews. Is that like what he's really good at is movement, staying alive, and doing like all all that sort of stuff, right? And so do you think he really just needed to play a lot more like? casually kind of to get all that sort of down without just the scrim practice? I, I don't really know. I just know that he started like just playing a lot differently than before. He challenges a lot more in Halo 5 than he would have in previous Halos. Mm -hmm. But he's he's still not the kind of guy who will over challenge and just throw away a death for no reason like some players are. And the team there. environment is also a part of <clears throat> staying alive and stuff. Like you could be really yeah. good at staying alive and all that, but if you're on a team where you're not comfortable or you guys aren't just working together, it doesn't really matter because you're not going to be able, you can do the same exact yeah. stuff, but you're not going to have like the same control. Your teammates aren't going to be there and you're just going to die anyway. That's fair. But he d he's not the type of player to just like Oh, I'm half shields and he's half shields. I think I can kill him. He's not. He's usually not uh, he the doesn't, type of player. He that. doesn't get average a lot. That's the yeah. term. He's not like a 50-50 guy. Like he's like yeah. a, if he has a 60-40, he'll take it. But, yeah. but he'll actually jump out a lot more in this game. Yeah, he does. He challenges a good amount. Has he talked about that at all, L Town? Like, has he talked about maybe having to change a little bit, or has he mentioned anything sort of like about Halo Five that kind of shows you? Oh, maybe he thought about Halo differently pre previously to this, and this kind of, this game's kind of molded how he's playing and, and thinking in a different way? Well, I would just say he's definitely more comfortable with us, like with me and uh, Rain now. Mm -hmm. We definitely open up the field more. And I don't know, he just he just doesn't take any unnecessary damage. He's like probably one of the best at not losing shields for no reason. Walking out and getting one shot and like, what was I doing? And then he has to hide it. Like that, That's just pointless. Getting one shot for no reason, have to, having to hide, and then your teammates get pushed. He's like the best at like always keeping his shields. He and Snipe Down both are really good at knowing like where they can be seen from at any given time. Like even if it even if there's no reason to think, oh, I can be seen from this angle behind me, like they're constantly aware that that angle is there and they don't like they'll check it before they go somewhere else or they just won't expose themselves to that. So they're both really good at that. Quality assurance, making sure they aren't getting Yeah. Up good run, way. Even good if they shouldn't. Thought. Yeah. Um, cool. Okay, so EG, um, Lethal, I want to pose this question to you before before we wrap things up and before I forget. If you had to, if you with all this, you know, now it's 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 done. There can be this can't happen this season, so you can just have some fun with this question. If you had to build a team today to like take on EG and give you guys a good series, you can't I mean CLG, sorry, and give you guys a good series um, from the players I'm on the not on EG anymore. League, no, you're gone. <laughs> you're, you've been dropped. Uh, You've been dropped. Oh. Uh, but if you have to t pick up a team, if you had to kind of create a, a, a team of players to, to beat CLG, who do you think would have the best, like, what would be the roster that you would think you'd be like, okay, now we've, we've got to start working. This is a good roster here. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> definitely throwing Hook on there because. Can't go wrong with Hook. I mean, you can't go, yeah. He's just, the way he plays is really fast and in your face, and he just doesn't miss. So if you're not missing gonna kill people and it'll be easier to win so uh who who mm. maybe snipe now i don't know he he i feel like whenever we play him we kind of really beat down on him though like he i feel like his series against us aren't really that haven't been that good so maybe he's just a team but i don't know maybe like a hook snipe down uh, Boo Boo and Stola or Roy or something. Something like that. Interesting. A weird team. Definitely a weird team. Yeah. But, well, not Weird really. teams are the best. Like, yeah. if you would have named this Envy roster before, like, they were started doing well, I was like, like, that's a weird team. <laughs> yeah. They, they're doing really good. They should be undefeated. Yeah. They're, they're doing really well right now. Uh, hopefully they'll keep doing well. This, I'm, I'm very excited for this match this week. It's going to be... 32-50-49. I, I just want to see... Jerry, that's what I want to see. <laughs> really, really good close game. Because, um, you know, from just from just like a fan or a pundit or whatever, from an outsider's point of view, when you're watching, it's kind of like... Some of these CLG series are almost like... I don't, I'm don't. i like torn on watching them. I'm like, I know I should watch this because it's like the top level play but it's also just destruction like this is like not pg-13 anymore you know like this 
Yeah. Like, it's just it's it's really one sided, and I want to see the teams like believe that they can beat you because I have I've had the first two weeks. Spartan said that there's no current roster in the HCS that could that could beat CLG. And then last he week was, he was a few he was a few drinks uh, deep, but he did say. Uh... And then last week, I think a few players <laughs> were basically. I think they they kind of echoed similar sentiments, did they not? Oddly, am I am I wrong on this? No, they they said and... they said with a little bit of practice, some of these rosters might put up a good fight against CLG if they had quality practice and might put up a good fight. That's very <clears throat> different than beating them. Well, they, they they made it sound like in certain circumstances these teams could beat CLG. Yeah. So they they had a little bit more faith than Spartan. Well, that's good. And it's good. I don't know. I don't know if their faith was well placed or not. But and it seems L Town has even a little bit more faith with his team. You know, heading into the final into the task, which is important. Um, but yeah, I want to I want to change my fourth from my roster that I said last week. I'm dropping Eco and picking up Ola. You picking up Ola? Yeah. You dropped your. So you dropped who's, your who's your four? Man. I had I had Hook, Hammy, Penguin, and now I'm getting Ola for my fourth. And of course, Marcus is coaching us. <laughs> Marcus, <laughs> job, Kevin. Yeah, but that that's a. Uh, I mean, uh, Mickwin just made a good point in the chat that was basically what I was trying to get at was that it's just like the the it's almost like a lot of these players and teams just have this mental block against CLG like they're better than us. We're gonna lose before we go even before we even go in. And like you can't you can't possibly win thinking like that, right? Definitely won't help your chances. <laughs> yeah, so definitely um, can't help. <laughs> no, I agree with I agree with Mick, what Mick just said though. Like most of the time, people go into the series just like, all right, we're gonna get you know destroyed. Let's just try our best. Yeah. You know, this yeah. is such the wrong mentality to go into a series or whatever. Yeah, because you're not you're Someone's not gonna mom telling their kid before they play like a little game, just do your best. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Um, but I guess that is one of the really strong points on for, for Envy is you've got one of the most successful, if not, I'm trying to think, he might be the most su successful overall like Halo player that's still left in the game, right? Like uh, with most land wins. Would that be Ola right now? Does anybody have more? Yes, he has 14, yeah. right? I think we think Snapdown has more. Snipedown. I mean, that, that counts right, AGLs. Are we counting AGLs? Because what are people out without AGLs? Yeah, I think I'm not Snipe counting AGLs. Snapdown has AGLs. Alright, this man, he needs to lower his number. If you're watching, you got to lower your Twitter bio. He has AGLs, he has PACs, a PAX 4-team tournament. How does that count? But he, count, he counted that as yes, a man, he didn't. He didn't <laughs> count it until someone posted a stat of the people's wins, and then he added it in. So he, he has 18, he, he says he has 18. You take out AGLs, you take out that. Uh... I know if yeah. I say this, he would argue, well, you you count your Invitational MCC one, but my Invitational didn't have Zenith snipers and stuff in it, so he counts that one, that packs, uh, for MCC, so that's my argument. I didn't play Team Snipers. <laughs> so he actually has, like, 10. Okay. Or 11. So, so and Ola has... I don't think I don't think Ola counts. Uh, no, he I didn't don't count. Know. I don't think yeah, he Ola probably has, like, well, it probably has like the same amount. I'm pretty sure Ola's at 14s, just MLG or like major. Yeah. You know what I mean, so, but the the point is that you've got a real like a real veteran there who's been who's played the best teams, been on the best teams, you know, been on that the God Squad and all, all this great stuff. So that gives you like that ability, right? And, and mickwin has been around for a long time too. Um, really like strong mental game. So that how much of like an edge does that give players like you and Rain when you're when you're because you guys are obviously newer to the scene, right? Like you're not have not been around since like 2008 playing at this level like these like or 2010 like uh Nick when I guess when we came around a little bit later but still right like you're a little bit newer so like does it does that help having these guys who are definitely gives me more confidence and more faith just knowing that once it comes to any time we're all going to show up I mean I'm, I could like throw in a little shot at Tib like you know we scrimmed liquid yesterday to kind of beat us in a series yeah but it's all pro league my time. Man Nick called Den Oxide. Eh, we played you. We we played him in a pro league match though, but I don't know. We definitely show up twenty time. I don't know why we can scrims. Kind of pisses me off, but I, just... I made sure when I posted on the forums that I, that I said Liquid beat Scrim Envy. We didn't beat Envy. We beat Scrim Envy. <laughs> yeah, we definitely need to work on that. Just why playing do you think the that same. Is? Is it just like you guys maybe are just sort of taking it a little bit less light, like more lightly, like you're not as focused? We definitely take tournaments. 
more serious, but we tr we try to take practice as serious, but it just doesn't happen sometimes. <laughs> That's not good. Try, but it's harder. It's it's definitely harder. It does make sense. I mean, there's no there's nothing actually on the line there, right? So like, there's no there's nothing like if you lose the game, there's technically no consequences. If you lose a game because yeah. you know you did some ridiculous shit that you would never do in a game, yeah. you're not going to be upset. And like about you make it. you make one bad play, you just get you're like I fucked up, and you just don't get over it for like a little bit. Meanwhile, in a tournament, you make a bad play, you're already over it when you spawn. Like you're already, yeah. it doesn't matter. And like between games, you're more likely to dwell on some of the mistakes and kind of get yourself down. And when it comes to scrims, then like in a tournament, if you stay talking about the game that just ended in a tournament, you are fucking your team over. Like this is a message to everybody out there. If you end a game in a tournament and you lost, forget that fucking game. Think about the next game. No, dude, keep thinking about it. Keep talking about it. Yeah, go into well, the talking next. about it. Go into I know you might be a minute into the next back, game and back and out of the lobby. You, you, you better keep talking about it. <laughs> like I died because you guys fucking on Plaza last Stop week. Stop telling people to fix their mental games, dude. It's a fucking lost <laughs> cause. People are just idiots. <laughs> I don't uh, know what it is about these gamers. Like, have mental breakdowns. They're not all trolls game. like you, Tony. It TJ. doesn't make sense, dude. People do overlook the mental Most aspect. Most things happen. Of they just they should they just break down. Yeah, I mean it is weird. People do easily like overlook that mental component too. Like because there's a lot of players that are like really good online. You know, I, I don't think there's any in Halo that I can recall that have been super Shit. prolific. But there's been some players, you know, in, in video games that are insane online. Cam's died. And Cam's then, died. Fuck. <laughs> back. Can we get them oh. back? Oh. Can we just Looks turn like them back it. on like that? Like just, it. Yeah. Oh, I guess it works, right? It's so dark. Oh, yeah, yeah right. it's, it's, it's weird. Dark thing. I'm it already dark weird. enough, Let's man. Go. I'm darker. Dude. <laughs> dark <down. laughs> My lights turned off too, so I'm in the same boat as you. But uh, lethal's now. TJ has been exposed for having a picture of Aaron fucking chilling on a lawn chair as a Skype picture. So. Dude, I'm trying to raise awareness for the man's ankles. <laughs> what about his ankles? Please and They're gone. And they've been liquefied. They've just snapped so many times they can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, okay, well, I, I don't know. Does anybody else have anything anything they wanna anything they wanna say before we uh, wrap this thing up? Been going at it for about an hour now. Uh, well, if any teams are making team changes, please hurry up. Yeah, because I would like I would like to tweet about them and get some favorites before I get on to scrim and stuff. So, hope you're ready to hold that L tonight. Me? Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, L, I'm going to hold his liquids fucking hopes of winning. <laughs> Damn, dude. I don't know why Skype is so dark right now. This is so it's nighttime. It's 8-11. Yeah, I guess. Skype nighttime just activated. Apparently we, we installed F.Lux. Yeah, so. Oh, there you there go. it goes. We're back. back. Sunrise. Yeah, sweet. Oh. Cool. That's dark town. Ah, oh, so oh, dude, you can see me again, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um... L-Town, anything you wanna anything you wanna say? Uh I'm just excited to play CLG, see what happens. Yeah, it should be that's that's probably I mean that might touch in the line. That will hopefully be one of the best series. Because I mean your series against Renegades, I think that was last week, right? That was or a week or two ago. Was that was ours? Yeah, two weeks NBA, ago. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, two weeks ago. That was probably the best series I think to date so far mm -hmm. in the HCS, in my opinion. Most entertaining, like the most one like that was you know what I mean? Like high Mix of between high level play and back and forth, and like it was a good, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that was a good series. It was definitely. Uh, lethal, anything you want to say? Well, I'm excited to play Envy and then touch the line. I'm also excited to play E6. Uh, I think those will be two really good series. Get through this week and then, you know, I think this is definitely like the hardest week we have left, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah. Just excited for that. Cool. Um, yeah, good luck in the games this week. Oddly, anything? Got a shout out to Alienware, HTC, HyperX, Jinx, oh, PC, Poker Stars, Quest. Yes, I'm out of here. Pause, 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 pause. pause, pause, pause. I, I yes, can't be guy. on with TJ I would like to shout out so Counterwatch well. Gaming, Astro, iBuyPower, <laughs> DX Racer, uh, and Twitch. Jesus, As well man. as America. Oh. <laughs> Is this is this sellout time, man? I don't yeah. think we should be oh shouting God. out America. Also, like to shout out uh, <laughs> Yankee <laughs> Candles. What else do I have around here? <laughs> CS Trophy. 
Uh, I thought it was in this Pringles in this Pringles can, I guess. I don't know. This guy's hey. just raking hey. in sponsorship. Pringles, let's fucking go. <laughs> That's my. just that is really weird actually. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. Also shout out to Hammy, you're the problem. No, dude. <laughs> <laughs> He's in chat, yeah. man. Leave the man be. He's been nice. I'd... <laughs> Okay, well, uh, I think that does it for it this, for us this week, guys. Um, thank you so much for coming in and watching. We'll be back next week with two more guests, hopefully from the two teams we have not had representatives from yet. So please help me and bitch at Optic and E6 and get get some players on here. <laughs> Good luck uh, with Optic. Yeah, that's I, I, I might <laughs> give up on Optic. I'm hoping. I asked APG, though, and I know Brad was in here earlier, so... Uh, There's a lot of attention, but yeah, not too much. I, I'm hoping we can just get just the perfect amount of attention to get him in here. So <laughs> we love you, Brad. We'd love to have you on. Uh, other than that, we'll talk to you guys next week. Thanks so much for you two for doing this. Um, take care, everybody. Later. Later.